close enough. Okay. I call the regular meeting for the board, Milliken Board of Trustees for October 28, 2020 to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Will the acting town clerk please call roll? Trustee Wakeman? Here. Trustee Trailer? Here. Trustee Rodriguez? Here. Trustee Grandquist? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Here. Mayor Austin? Here. Thank you. Does anyone have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Um, yes, Mayor, we have one addition to the discussion agenda. Yes. Uh, the item 14A, discussion of town administrator. Okay. Any other changes? I'll take a motion. I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Acting town clerk, please call for a vote. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Citizens comment. Citizens comment is a point in the meeting where the public is invited to address the town board on any items except agenda items for which there is a public hearing. We do have a public hearing tonight. All public comment on public hearing items will occur during the scheduled public hearing. All comments should be directed to the town board. There's a three minute limit <coughs> per speaker. Please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. Are there any general comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to the meeting minutes. Is there any discussion or comments on the meeting minutes of October 14th, 2020? I move that we approve the minutes as printed. Second. Uh, Acting Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Motion, uh, Mayor Pro, or excuse me, Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Tonight we have the list of bills. Does anybody have any questions on the list of bills that have been paid? <coughs> Hearing none, we will move on to the town administrator's report. Interim administrator, Powell. Yes, Mayor and trustees. Um, at the last meeting, I spoke about um, Keith Staggs uh, contacting Evergreen Skate Parks. They're the ones that constructed the skate park in Milliken um, regarding having them look it over and uh, for any maintenance or painting that needs to be accomplished on it. Um, we did find there was a couple of panels loose on it that could risk, you know, be a hazard to the kids skating. Um, Evergreen is out of uh, state and won't be back until the spring, but in discussion with Keith, he, they explained to Keith how to fix those for now to keep the park safe. Um, they'll be here in the spring to look over the whole park and um, go, we'll go from there. So I just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, Historical Society, um, uh, Scott actually went and called um, a few licensed plumbers and uh, electricians. And so we received a few bids. Those will be coming to you at some point. Um, so there was a couple of bids for those. So we'll get going on the Heritage House. On the skate park, I think there was also a question on warranty tie-in. Did you find anything on that? On the skate park, no. The, the warranty time on that has expired. Okay. Yeah. And actually, we've had really good luck with it. This is the first time we've had anything kind of break mm -hmm. loose. So, and it gets used a lot. So I'm really good. glad we can make the repair before they have to be here in the spring. Yep. Um, 
snow? Well, we had quite a bit of it, and I think they handled it fairly well. Um, there's always a few hiccups the first storm or two, um, and we've got a lot of new people on staff in public works, so, um, but I think they did a good job. Um, we didn't really receive any complaints on it, so um, that went well. Uh, Judge uh, Randy England, I spoke to you about him. Um, so he consulted with his wife. Um, she doesn't want him to take that any more responsibilities. Um, so he had to say no, he wouldn't even attempt to um, you know, come in and put an application up for that. Um, Teresa Ablo, um, she can begin in January. Um, but um, Sunita Sharma um, has offered, according to um, Chief Garcia, has offered to cover November and December, um, serving as judge. So we're, we're covered on the court side um, because this month was the last month for um, our current judge. I'm sorry, Randy, I was not Randy, it was uh, Judge Owl, Stuart Owl was the one. Sorry, Stuart Owl cannot serve. Randy Aiglin is the one who is serving and gave notice for the end of November. So, sorry, Heather names mixed up. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> nope. Okay. That's it for me. All right. General comment. Um, <laughs> the town uh, sponsored, along with the Millican Police Department and the Millican Events Committee, our first. Um, Millican Monster Mash last weekend. Well, it was pretty successful. <coughs> I think we kind of filled up the streets with children in costumes. Uh, we served almost 600 uh, dinners, nachos and or um, quesadillas, quesadillas uh, along with um, some donated pizza in about an hour and 45 minutes. It went quickly. Children screamed in the haunted house. It took us seven hours to set up the haunted house, but I guess they really enjoyed it. So I do need to give a shout out to our parks and public works guys. Um, it was cold. They still, they set up our two big 20 by 40 tents with a tent heater. People were very appreciative. And we got a lot of comments. Nothing really went, you know, way wrong. Um, our, our Millican Police Department was right there uh, alongside of us with all of the activities. So it was a great effort on part of everybody and a big shout out to our Parks and Public Works and a big thank you to them. So there we go. That's the end of our comments. <coughs> Moving on to our consent agenda. Um, I, we're going to read the resolution so everybody uh, understands and then we will vote on the consent agenda. Trustee Grenquist. Uh, resolution number 20-28, a resolution appointing a successor to fill the vacancy in office of board member. Uh, whereas there's a vacancy in office for a board member, for a member of the board of trustees with the town of Millican and whereas in accordance with CRS 31-4-106 and 31-4-108 to be, the board of trustees must either appoint a person to fill the vacancy within 60 days of the vacancy or schedule a special election. And whereas the board has determined Pursuant to resolution number 20-23 to fill the board member uh, vacancy by appointment in order to save time and the expense of conducting a special election. And whereas the town advertised on the, on the town website and in the Johnstown Breeze to see qualified candidates to fill the vacancy. And whereas a duly noticed regular meeting on October 28th, the board voted to appoint a successor to serve as board member. Now therefore be resolved by the board of trustees of the town of Millican, Colorado that the Board of Trustees hereby appoints Linda Meisner to fill the vacancy of board member until the next regular election in April 2022, whereupon a successor will take office. The resolution shall take effective immediately, adopted and approved this 28th day of October 2020. Thank you. Acting Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Early? Yes. Trustee Granquist? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. We will take a brief break for a swearing in ceremony. Aye. Linda Meesner. Aye. Linda Meesner. 
Constitution and laws of the United States of America. The United States of America. And of the state of Colorado. And of the state of Colorado. In the ordinances of the town of Milligan. And the ordinances of the town of Milligan. And shall faithfully perform. And shall faithfully perform. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. The duties of the office of trustee. The duties of the office of trustee. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. We'll wait for a moment for the seating of our new trustee, and then we will proceed with the action agenda. on our action agenda is a public hearing to consider an application for a use by special review to allow auto sales in the MUC-D district. Uh, presenting will be Pepper McClanahan, our community development director. The time is 641. I'm opening the public hearing. Ms. McClanahan. Mayor and members of the Board of Trustees, uh, before you this evening is a use by special review. This application is just to consider a use. We did not get a simultaneous site plan application with it. That will come to you at a, um, that will come actually to the planning commission at a later date. So um, it's located on the northeast corner of Broad Street and North Josephine. The lot is currently vacant and the applicants are Martin Land Company, LLC, Will Gardner is authorized rep representative. The land uses to the north uh, is vacant, the former mobile home park that the town, town now owns. To the west is an existing manufactured home park. To the south is the Front Range Fire and Rescue Station, Fireman's Park, and some residential west of South Josephine Avenue. To the east is downtown commercial, a liquor store, and other businesses. The zoning, as you mentioned, is MU-C-D, which is mixed-use commercial downtown. The comprehensive plan for Millican designates the site for downtown commercial and business uses. Initial notice of this public hearing was mailed to surrounding property owners within 300 feet, was published in the Johnstown Breeze, and a sign was posted on the property on September 24th. Notice of the special hearing procedures due to COVID-19 were mailed to property owners within 300 feet on October 12th and also republished in the town breeze on October 15th as, recorder, as required by municipal code and resolution 20-16B. This staff report is prepared in accordance with the land use code section 163500 used by special review. The applicant is requesting approval for the use of the property for automobile sales only the site plan submission for the physical construction and design of the site will be submitted as a separate application. 163500 states that in order to provide flexibility and to help diversify uses within a zoning district, specified uses are permitted in certain zoning districts subject to the granting of a use by special review permit. Because of their unusual or special circumstances, uses by special review require uh, review and evaluation uh, so that they may be located uh, properly with respect to their effects on surrounding properties. Uses by special review may be permitted subject to conditions and limitations as the board may prescribe to ensure that the location and operation of the use mitigates any impacts to adjacent properties and is compatible with surrounding land uses in the zoning district in which it is located. The following criteria are in the municipal code to be used to evaluate the applicant's request. Number one, the use by special review will satisfy all applicable provisions of the zoning code and subdivision regulations unless a variance is requested. No variance was requested with the application. The use by special review will confirm with or further the goals, policies, and strategies set forth in the comprehensive plan, community design standards, the Millican Parks, Open Spaces, and Trails Master Plan. 
The use by special review will be adequately served with public utilities, services, and facilities, including water, sewer, electric, schools, if applicable, street system, fire protection, storm drainage, refuge collection, and park system, again, if applicable, and uh, not impose an undue burden above and beyond those of permitted uses of the district. The use by special review will not substantially alter the basic character of the district in which it is uh, in which it is located or jeopardize the development or redevelopment potential of the district. The use by special review will result in sufficient on and off site traffic circulation, which will not have a significant adverse impact on the surrounding adjacent uses or result in hazardous conditions for pedestrians or vehicles or adjacent to the site. Potential negative impacts for the use by special review on the rest of the neighborhood or the neighborhood on the use by special review have been mitigated through setbacks, architecture, screen walls, landscaping, site arrangements, or other methods. The applicant shall satisfy and address the following potential impacts. Traffic, activity levels, light, noise, odor, building types, style, and scale, hours of operation, dust, erosion control, and effects on neighborhood character. And last, uh, the last criteria for review approval is the applicant has submitted evidence that all applicable lo local, state, and federal permits have been or will be obtained. Uh, the town did seek referral comments, and uh, we had the following referral agencies indicate that they did not have any concerns or conflict with automobile sales. That included U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, the Colorado Department of Natural Resources, uh, CDOT, uh, and the Millican Water and Wastewater Director. The Front Range Fire and Rescue District noted that while they do not have any objection to the use for the automobile sales, they noted that there are several key areas that will need to be addressed in the site design through the site plan application, uh, and they listed several of those, but again, those were related to the site design and not the use. Jonathan Giesek of Procode Millican's contract building official also responded with a list of items that will need to be included in the construction plans and building permit application packet uh, to properly review during site plan, site application and construction. Mr. Giesek did not indicate any objection to, this, to the use. Forest Leaf Millican's water engineer noted that at the time of site plan, the applicant must provide a water supply plan uh, Mr. Leaf again did not indicate any objection to the use. <laughs> findings of fact, staff finds that the proposed use and application meets the criteria of the use by special review as specified in section 163500 of the Mill Millican Municipal Code because automobile sales and detailing is compatible with surrounding land uses. The proposed use meets the intent of the mixed use commercial downtown district and will further the goals of the comprehensive plan through the addition of a business in a downtown. The location is served by utilities and the site plan is a site plan is required prior to commencement of the use and is required to address the negative impacts on the neighborhood such as traffic vehicular circulation light noise odor <coughs> building type style and scale hours of operation dust and erosion control staff recommends approval of the use by special review with the following eight conditions number one the use by special review, review shall only apply to automobile sales and detailing. There won't be any auto repair, for instance. Number two, a site plan must be approved prior to commencement of the use, and the site plan will require uh, will comply with all requirements, including but not limited to the site plan, um, landscaping standards, downtown architectural and commercial standards. The site plan shall address traffic, lighting, noise, odors, hours of operation, dust, erosion control, and impacts to adjacent residential uses. Uh, number three, all automobiles on the property shall be sale ready, in operable condition, and capable of carrying a valid registration. Number four, inoperative vehicles as defined in section 72120 of the municipal code are prohibited on the property at all times. Number five, the number of cars offered for sale shall not exceed the number of off-street parking spaces provided for said inventory, plus the required off-street parking spaces for employees and customers as approved by the required site plan. And no time shall sales inventory occupy a handicap accessible parking space or be parked in the public right of way. Number six, prior to commencement of the use, the applicant must also submit any other required applications and obtain required permits, including but not limited to commercial building permit, business license, a state automobile dealer's license, 
Uh, these conditions of approval shall become part of the town's business license for the use. And number seven, the use by special review shall be reviewed annually by town staff in a report of compliance with the conditions of approval provided to the Planning Commission and to the Board of Trustees. Number eight and last, the use by special review may be revoked for non-compliance with conditions of approval and violations of the terms of the business license issued by the town pursuant to the procedures in section 61-160 of the Municipal Code. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on October 21st. There was no testimony from the public in opposition or support of the application. The Planning Commission forwarded a recommendation of approval to the Board of Trustees with the eight conditions uh, recommended by staff. And with that, I conclude the staff report. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, I'm gonna open it up for board questions. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich, starting with you. Um, so on the site plan that uh, would include the surface area, whether it be pavement, concrete, rock. Yes, the site plan criteria requires that all of the area is identified as to what surfacing will be. Okay. And, and that all has to be complete before they can open for business? Correct. That was it. Okay. That's all I got. Trustee Trump? This spot's not very big, is it? It's uh, about 0.34 of it. Four three fourth of an acre, point three four acres, so it's about just shy of fifteen thousand square feet. It's a total of five lots in in that block, and it's not in that flood. It's not in a floodplain. That's here. This is the new part. Yeah. This goes downhill pretty quick. Any other questions, Trustee Trail? I don't understand how they're going to fit so many cars there. Employee cars and a building. That's the size of a car. Okay. Are they going to build Again, that's the site plan. Yeah. I think that's all the questions. <laughs> Thank you. Trustee Grenquist? None for me. Uh, Trustee Wakeman? No questions. Trustee Rodriguez? I have no questions. <laughs> Trustee Meisner? I only have one question. I couldn't tell from the drawing how many parking spaces are on the, uh, are proposed. The drawing is conceptual. It's not a site plan, so it doesn't provide that level of detail. Okay. okay. I have a question for Mr. Garden. Hello, my name is Will Gardner. I live at 3818 West 16th Street Lane in Greeley. My mother and father live at 801 Forest. My Aunt Linda and Uncle Ron live at, on Kathleen. My Ch Uncle Charles lives behind the gas station. My grandparents still, the family still owns their house on 105 North Irene. Mm -hmm. um, really what we want to do is what we did 20 years ago. We want to put cars on the corner and sell them. We're willing to do all the site plan where we're willing to do the concrete, the asphalt. You asked about how many cars would fit. Technically, we should probably get between between 15 and 20. When we used the opposite corner, we got almost 25 on there. It was a little different because we didn't have to have concrete at the time. Um, realistically, we would like between 15 and 25 cars. We're gonna allow whatever you allow us to do. Um, you don't think it's very big until you put a car on there. If you ever go down there, like this weekend when you had all the kids sitting there, there were probably 10 cars parked on there and I could have drove a bulldozer through it still. Um, cars aren't as big as you think because we're not selling semis. Um, you said you had a question for me? Yes, what's the source of these vehicles that you're selling? What do you mean the source? Where am I buying them? Yeah, where are they coming? I buy 90% of them from the auction. What, there's, what a, there's an auction, there's three in Denver, there's one in Loveland, Loveland Auto Auction sells, we will go there, we'll go to Dealers Auto Auction in Denver, we'll go to everything that we put on that lot will be 2010 and newer, right around 100,000 miles, and we'll be able to, our price range is going to be between 
five and 15,000. We do not want a brand new car dealership there. We can't afford that. Millican can't afford that. Okay. Um, we're, our target audience, our ta target person that will buy a car is in that $10,000 range. It's a good used vehicle. And are buy, any, what's that? Are any of them salvage title vehicles? A salvage title, I don't know if you understand. I, I'm not, I'm just, a salvage title is given by an insurance company. Right. Not by you or I. I owned a salvage yard, my family owned it, we just sold it, we owned it for 50 years. I could never hand down a salvage title. It was only done through the insurance company. Will I have them? Occasionally, yes but they will all be approved by the state of Colorado. For me to sell a salvage title vehicle, I have to have it inspected and stamped by the state patrol. Right. Everything, if, if we do, we do have them occasionally. I try to avoid them because they are kind of a pain in the butt to, to, to mess with, but they are, they are gonna happen. I'm not gonna ever say, I'm, I'm not gonna have all salvage titles. I try to avoid them, but I do have them occasionally. Yes. What do you what do you anticipate as far as the delivery or courier of the vehicles to and from the yard? I well, ninety percent of the ones I buy will drive. You know, if I buy it from the auction, ninety percent of them will run and drive. The other ten percent, I have a, a truck and a trailer, and I'll go pick them up, take them straight to the mechanic, have them fixed, and when they hit the car lot, they're ready for sale. I don't I don't have a place to work on them in, in Milliken. I. I don't have a shop anymore. I, <laughs> I, we sold the salvage yard, so we don't have a place to, but I have a mechanic in Greeley, I have a body shop in Greeley that we use, that we have a, you know, not really a contract, but we, we use them. Um, we will use local people if, if the price to fix it is correct. You know, I'm, my bottom dollar is all I care about. I, if I make, if I can have it fixed in Milliken and, and it would be the same price as fixing it in Greeley, I will bring all the business to Milliken. I would love to use the Millican businesses to help me get this stuff going, but if it, if, and it's all about cost. What do you anticipate as far as truck and trailers loading or unloading on public roadways versus on it would your it, I would I would do it on our property. It, it, the truck and trailer is a Chevy pickup with a, with a gooseneck. Okay. It's a, you could legally park it on any street mm -hmm. overnight. It's not a big tractor trailer. It's a, a Chevy pickup. Okay. <clears throat> Any other board questions? Okay, at this point, we're inviting the public for any public comment. <clears throat> Please approach the podium, state your name and your address for the record. Good evening, my name is Jerry Solomon, and my husband Tim and I own Evergreen Mobile Home Park at 103 North Josephine Avenue, which is right across the road. My main question is, what do you consider off-street parking? We already have trouble coming up Josephine to the highway and being able to see to the left when the semi-trailers are parked in front of the liquor store unloading beer. There's an awful lot of traffic that goes up and down the highway and if you can't get up that hill and see around that corner already with the semis in front of the liquor store, how are we gonna see around 25 cars in a building? So that's one of my questions. Yeah, my name. Sure. Um, the building is going to be. Uh, excuse next. me. You need to answer the podium. Okay. Thank you. The building is going to be next to the liquor store, back off of Main Street, ten feet. <clears throat> you have the whole sidewalk and then an additional ten feet. So there will be no blockage of view because of a building. It's going to be offset there, off off Main Street, and. Right now, there's enough parking on Main Street and we'll have additional parking in the car lot that, that that's where they can park. 
if they're parked on Main Street, that those pots have been there since we put the road in in, in the 80s. So you, I can't, you can't say no to those parking. I'm not going to use Josephine at all for parking because we don't need it. We'll have enough spaces in the in next to the office and on Main Street for parking. So your off-street parking is going to be the three or four spaces in front of the building, and and, and then we're going to have and then we're going to have spaces in the car lot next to the building. Correct. But we will not we will not park a car on Josephine. That's what you're worried about. No, I wasn't worried about that. I'm just asking how to see around everything pulling out of the parking. I don't know. I, I can't really stop people's view. I, you know, it's, it's well. That's a, just one of my concerns. It, and I agree, it is a concern. It's 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 a horribly designed road. It's it's been dangerous for the last thirty years. Yep. And it's it's nothing I can change to make it better. Well, they changed a little bit after the fire. Yeah, they did. But I mean, you know, I, it's not that wasn't up to me. <laughs> that was the town. So. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, Mrs. Sullen? If they're not going to use Josephine to pull in, their only option then is to park in front of the building. How are they going to get into your lot then? I will just stay up there. I wasn't, I wasn't okay. here the 24. Yeah, yeah. The we will. We will still use front. Josephine to pull down and into the car lot. We just won't okay. park on Josephine. Okay. We still have to use Josephine because we can't have access from 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 Broad Street. That's a state highway. They're not going to let us cut into that. They're going to go down and use the, the cut in like they like we've used since it was a trailer park. There's a, a road there. We're going to use that and pull in. We're going to have parking next to the building and then on Main Street. Nothing on Josephine and nothing on any alley. Excuse me, was it Walmart? I lived there for 25 years. It was a trailer park when I lived there. <laughs> there are estates. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other citizens' comments? Questions? Hi, I'm Brenda Kishinuma. I reside at 275 West Forest Street, Milliken. My number is 303-718-0397. I do have some concerns, um, and maybe he can clarify. I personally have witnessed articles being moved into the garage. The address is not 105 South or North Irene Avenue. It is classified as 103 North Irene Avenue. So if you live there, you would know the address. But anyway, I have problems with what's going in there as far as engines, radiators, heaters in the back so you can heat the garage because I know it's not heated. Um, how you've made comment to other people that you were going to work in the garage. And for my concern here, and I'm gonna make it very clear that my daughter did not want me up here. His aunt is I just landlord. I just need some clarification. Are you mm -hmm. talking about the building that's going to go in on the property for the car lot? I'm okay, talking the public about the hearing. garage behind where my daughter and son-in-law rent. This. Okay, this this is a public hearing for the property on either side of the liquor store where the car lot's. I wasn't here for the other one because I want the, the town to know what is going in that garage and cars are already showing up over there. It's in a residential area. Okay. That's a separate Thanks. issue. Okay, so when can I come on that? Please. That would have been during citizens' comment. May I speak? I live at that address and I Just a moment. Okay. Let's settle what we're, we've, what we've got here now. Your comments need to be limited to what's in front of the board, the action item for the, the auto sales at the, uh, okay, on either so side of the liquor store, basically. Okay. Well, I guess my main concern is the garage so I don't know what I can do from this point I'm not happy I have grandchildren there he has moved stuff on and off of there with the grandkids there and I just I okay. want to make sure the safety of my children if he's going to use that place 
to haul all that stuff in there because there's already cars there. You can drive over there and see them. Okay, if you have a complaint about a specific residence, you need to log that with the town administrator. Okay. And who's that? I'm sorry? Is that you? Yes. What's your name again? Cheryl Powell. Okay, because I didn't get to attend the other meeting either. I was okay. out of town. Why don't you um, either give me a call? I'll call you tomorrow. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other commentary about the auto sales that's before the board now? I have a question. I didn't sign in. My name still speak. You can still come up if you have a comment about the auto sales. Yes. Yeah, I do. My name is Brianna Condi. I live at 103 North Irene Avenue. Uh, phone number is 970-381-5914. So my comments are in regards to his lot um, and what is being used for that lot. Um, the traffic that is going through there in the alley now is awful. And if you add a car dealership there, the traffic is gonna be worse. One, the alley is not maintained now. As a public alley, it does not get maintained. People speed through there. How is it going to be maintained with a car dealership coming there? I have two kids, a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and you're telling me it's safe for that traffic to come through there. His car dealership is being garage, is being ran out of my backyard in the garage as a residential, and he's turning it, that is where he's using at his detail shop. He has propane there, radiators, there's cars sitting in my grass that has been concreted already. And that's where he plans to maintenance these vehicles that will be on that lot in a residential backyard, my backyard where my children play. That is not safe for my children. It is not safe for the children at the mobile home park that play through there, that walk there. There is so much more traffic gonna be added when that car dealership shows up. It doesn't matter if they're brand new cars or used cars, it's still gonna happen. The traffic is gonna be added more. You're gonna tweak away parking from the liquor store because now that is parking for the car dealership. Cars are still gonna park on Josephine because that is the only parking allowed. How is the trash trucks gonna get in there and give trash picked up from the liquor store because now the alley has been taken away from them to get in properly. How is anyone going to get in there? So that is what I have. Thank you. Thank you. If I may respond. Please. We are not using the alley. We are not going to park cars in the alley. People can drive in the alley now. It's not my job to make an alley safe. I don't have the right to make that safe. If we've been using that alley as a people drive through it now, they've been driving through it for the last 25 years. We've had a liquor store. I sold, I opened and sold that liquor store. My grandma, the house she's talking about, I put the stuff that I needed to store into my little two car garage because I sold my, my salvage yard. Right now that's in there is my car and my, and I put some metals and some motors that I put in there. The propane there is not hooked up to the garage. It, the garage has its own heater. I'm not, you know, I'm not using that for anything but storage. I put the concrete around it so it wouldn't turn into mud if I did pull my classic car into that garage. If you go open the door right now, my Nova's sitting in it. My Mustang will go onto the other side. I'm gonna put a lift in there for storage only. Yes. Where is this garage that you're referring to? Could you point it out, please? Underneath all the trees, you can see just the butt end of it, right there ah, okay. on my grandmother's property. All right, thank you. We are not gonna use that for anything but storage of my vehicles. I did put some stuff on the back side of it because I am going to take it and sell it. They're classic car engines. 
they're <laughs> they won't be there long. I'm trying to sell them as fast as I can, but I wasn't going to lose them on the sale of the yard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments? Brianna, come to you again. Um, in regards to the alley being an alley for the last 20 years, that is incorrect. I've lived in that house for the last almost seven years. Only within the last year, maybe year and a half, has it turned into an alley. Prior to that, there was a carport. And the carport with our parking, um, you can ask Chief. He has confirmed it since he's been here. It was a carport. Our landlord, had a, we had to remove our parking because the town said it was no longer a carport, but now a drive. So it's only been a year to a year and a half that that alley has been accessible to all residents in the town. Prior to that, it was just a carport. Um, uh, Pepper McClanahan, could you please address whether or not this has always been an alleyway? Uh, Mayor and trustees, yes, it has always been a platted alley since the 1910 plat. Um, there were some encroachments in the alley that okay. were discovered through the Martin um, property acquisition with FEMA and they were subsequently removed. Okay, so it was an encroachment on our property? Yes, on the alley. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, any other citizens' comments? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing at 7.12. And does the board have any discussion on this matter before we take a vote? Any further discussion? I have a Sure, please. Mr. Gardner. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Will. <laughs> Good seeing you. Good to see you. Um, if if you're not, why are you putting a lift in the in the garage if you're not using it for? Because I have three classic cars and only have two spots on the ground to put them. I have a Corvette, a Mustang, and a Nova, and I'm going to keep them out of the weather. Okay. Thank you. All right. If there's no further discussion. I'll take a motion on the matter. Make a motion. The Board of Trustees finds after hearing testimony and examination the documents presented set forth in the staff report that the use by Special Review Act application to allow auto sales in the MU-C-D district on lot 17-21, block 41 in the town of Milliken at the northeast corner of Broad Street and Josephine Avenue meet the provisions of the land use code and the comprehensive plan and approves the use by special review subject to the conditions outlined by staff which means that if the conditions outlined by staff aren't met that the auto sales will not open i'll second acting town clerk please call for a vote trustee wakeman yes Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? No. Uh, Trustee Trailer? No. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. And Mayor Austin? I uh, missed. I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> uh, Trustee Meesner? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. All right. Next item is the inter intergovernmental agreement with Well County for Guard Terminal Services. Chief Garcia. 
Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. You have before you the um, <clears throat> intergovern intergovernmental agreement with the Weld County Guard or Weld County for the Guard Terminal Services. Uh, the Guard Terminal Services allows authorized users, including departments, to make entries into the Colorado Crime Information Center and the National Crime Information Center. Just to kind of give you a little bit of history, as part of the as part of CBI and the CGIS um, Justice Justice Information Center, all criminal justice agencies are mandated to have a terminal guard. Um, the Greenwood Police Department was our terminal guard, but they are they're now going to their own records. Uh, they're going to have their own records separate from Weld County. So they no, they're no longer going to do our records, but Weld County took it on for a lot of the agencies around northern Colorado to do the terminal guard for them. And Millican was, was part of that. Uh, part, of the, part of the entries that they do, um, <clears throat> entries of all municipal warrants, so if we do have a municipal warrant here in Millican, we send it up to Weld County. They enter it into our system. That's considered a data entry. Uh, they do all our sex offender registrations. So that's another entry. So we send it up to county. What they do is, is they put it into the CCIC and CIC Information Center. Um, missing persons, stolen vehicles, all those are required to be entered into CCIC. So those are some of the things that uh, the terminal guard will be doing for us. All right, opening up for uh, questions from the trustees. Uh, Trustee Meisner? No questions. Okay. Trustee Rodriguez? No questions. Trustee Wakeman? No questions. Trustee Grunquist? Uh, on the cost and invoicing, has that already been kind of is it the, pretty much the same cost as before, no change? Or? Yeah, it's going to be the same cost. Okay. Um, we're looking at, uh, we fall in the range from 20 to 49. It's okay. About, it's at about $1,500. So we did put that amount of money into the budget. Okay. So no other questions? I have no questions. I have no questions. There we go. Hearing no further questions, I'll take a motion on the matter. Make a motion we approve the intergovernmental agreement. Second. Oh, wait. Second. Well, no, I guess it's with the Colorado Crime Information Center and the National Crime Information Center databases. Second that. Okay. Acting town clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Erlich? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Grandpa's? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is consideration for approval of the townwide access control and security cameras for the parks. Wade Nickerson, Finance Director. Good evening, Board and Trustees. So, uh, this item in front of you, uh, it's kind of two parts, but we sort of presented it as one. Um, the first part of this I'll speak about is the access control. Currently we don't have uh, any access control at the at the uh, water and wastewater treatment facilities. Uh, they still use keys and sometimes keys get lost, doors get left open, that type of thing. So what we're trying to do is get that secured up with uh, you know either proximity cards or the little key fobs uh, to, to get that um, get that under better control. Um, we currently have a system that we've used to create lock and key with uh, at Town Hall as well as the Public Works building. Um, and what this uh, quote does is it gets waste, the water wastewater on uh, access control. It updates, updates the system at Town Hall and Public Works as well as the one in the police building um, that is the original equipment that was provided with the building. Um, and th what this will do is this will give us one system uh, it'll all it'll be controlled uh, all in one place. One uh, administrator that can then give out properties, you know, to the people at the different locations. Um, 
and like I said, part of this is um, based on the fact that we've used Greedy Lock and Key before. Uh, they've been working with us um, on our current systems as well as past projects with this, uh, as well as there's, we believe that if we, there's a limited number of these types of uh, companies out there to provide this service. And, and we're able to, if we use Greedy Lock and Key, we're able to utilize some of the equipment we actually, we already have. We'll be able to use some of it uh, and then upgrade the other parts and keep our prices a little lower. Uh, the second piece of this, uh, there's been a lot of discussion regarding security cameras, um, especially at the skate park and Ada Park. Um, so, yeah, one, Lola. I'm sorry, Lola. <laughs> um, this, uh, we've been, we've reached out, tried to, find uh, someone that was willing to you know help give it get us uh, going on security cameras for the for those locations and uh, really lock and key currently works with the school district they've got contacts there we need some equipment on some of the school buildings to make all of our equipment work correctly uh, and so that's why this is being presented this way uh, that that it's all really lock and key uh, because of our our relationship as well as the relationship they have with some of our partners to get those security cameras uh, up up at the park. Uh, anyway, and I'd be willing to take questions on this because I just gave you a whole lot of background. <laughs> so uh, I'll just start with just a couple questions if you don't mind. <clears throat> uh, the security cameras that we're thinking about putting at the skate park and Lola Park. Yes. Prior, we had the cameras actually mounted on the school uh, building. And then we had to wait for school access to get to the video. Will they be mounted in a way now on, I see we've got poles here, so that we can retrieve the video as soon as we need it? Yeah, th these will all be, and I'll try and use the correct language, these will all be like IP type cameras, so we'll all be able, so we'll be able to staff users will be able to access that um, ongoing when needed immediately. And, and they'll be mounted on poles? <laughs> yes, they'll be mounted on poles and, but it's all, it's all, um, it's all internet based, so we don't have to climb up and get and tapes and anything like that. What's gonna prevent our industrious individuals from climbing up to those poles and swiping the cameras. Hopefully, knowing that they're on camera will prevent them from doing that. <laughs> no, I don't. No, it, yes, it, it, it is. Good answer. It, it is a legitimate concern. I mean, I've dealt with I've dealt with security cameras before, and that is a concern. Um, but maybe we can grease those poles. Ooh. Well, you know, you get like the, the squirrel, the squirrel spinners they have for bird feeders. <laughs> you know, you get about halfway up and things throws them off. I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but I do believe that that is a concern that, that um, you know, and, and fortunately, the cameras aren't the most expensive part of the system. Not that I want them taken away and have to be replaced, but they are a lower cost than, than the, you know, the repeaters and the, and the other hardware that compiles all that information for us. And how long will the video be available for? Um, actually, I don't know that I have that information. Steve, can you have? It isn't Yeah, I'm not sure. If you store it on a little hard drive, so hard drive. How long before we write over top of it, though? It could be days or weeks. I'm looking for 30, 60 days. days. Something like that, probably. Let me think about that a little bit. Let's go out to the board members. Trustee, <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Merlick. Uh, question on the cameras. You said they're Wi-Fi cameras? Uh, or not hardwired? I believe, I believe, it's, I believe it's internet protocol, no. yeah, IP. All right. All right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are. Are they struggle to work correctly in uh, cold weather? My assumption is yes. I'm, I mean, we're getting a quote from the professionals, and they're, getting, they're quoting us stuff. They know it's going to be outside. Uh, 24 hours a day every year so my assumption on that is yes those are made to work outside they will work correctly or they will not work correctly in the cold weather i my assumption is they would i don't they know would. why they'd okay. give us a quote on cameras that would not 
that would not work. I want to make sure on that we can one. follow up. Well, yeah, I've, I mean, I've heard that the that the the cameras that aren't hardwired anything under uh, fourteen degrees. These, uh, these will be hardwired. Messes with is hardwired. Yeah, these will yeah. be hardwired. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind then. Yeah. They're POE. Forget my question. POE cameras. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's all I got. I have a question. Just What's true. the warranty on it? Is there a warranty? Um, or do they warranty their work? I would assume they warranty their work. I don't have that in front of me. It's not on the quote anywhere. So we have a follow-up question on warranty, both on parts and labor. Okay. I have one more question. Go ahead. Does it go to an app, or does it go straight to the town, like a? Do you know what I mean? Like well, does Chief have I, it I on believe, an app? I believe it goes to both. I think oh, that. Okay. I think we have. I think it provides. Um, like web access, secure web access, so you can view the cameras there. I don't know that it's an app. We're not going to give it out to the public. No, this right. will be a right, of course. staff. Yeah. <laughs> this will be a staff. Yeah. Um, viewed uh, footage only. Yeah. Trusty Grunquist. Yeah, I'd like to find out more about the uh, the loop storage, as well as if we're doing a kind of AWS offsite or cloud storage of these videos with uh, some audit trails as well. I know that there's there's some citing in here for the, the local hard drive, local storage, but I'd like to see what their solutions are for echoing to cloud storage, AWS servers, or what have you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay, hey, uh, Trustee Wakeman. Um, I have a question, Mr. Nickerson, on the um, budgeting. Am I reading this right, that it'll be out of the water and wastewater accounts? Yes. Yeah, water and wastewater will pay, will pay for their own pieces. For what? They'll pay for their, own piece, for their own pieces of the access control, not the security cameras. Security cameras will be completely out of the general fund. Uh, it's a parks expense okay. um, waste water and wastewater is only for the access control on those on those buildings okay all right thank you trustee rodriguez so based on what i'm reading you're asking for about five thousand two hundred and ninety dollars more than what's quoted yep is there what's the reasoning so these are these are quotes these are estimates and so we would prefer to ask for your uh, approval to if it if it comes in and you know they they needed an extra you know hundred feet of wire that we don't have to come back and ask for an additional fifty two dollars for the wire. So we ask just for a little bit more money because these are just estimates, um, and even on them they say you know actual invoice amount may be different. It could be lower, but we're not going to chance that. So we're just asking. For we do this on a lot of these quotes like this just to kind of cover ourselves so we don't have to come back um, unless it's a major change. I believe that that's right around 10%, somewhere in there. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Meisner. Well, having been involved with getting security cameras up, I don't find the estimate to be out of line. I have another question. Yeah. On the, uh, on the fifth page where they have the cameras, they also have a line for access control labor, which happens to be the exact same amount as the line on the previous estimate. So probably some clarification there. I, I don't think that meant to say access control and be the exact same no, amount. I, I, yeah, I don't think it meant to say access control labor, but it, I think that they I think they gave us hours worked, and that may we can ask for clarification on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, one last question: Does Greeley Lock and Key have a service contract where they come out and periodically test the cameras, make sure they're working, that we're not losing video? Yeah, I, I don't know that. We can we can follow up on that. I I think we need to 
get a service contract so that we know we don't want to go after video and find out wow that camera's been down for two weeks a month something odd or the squirrel ran up the pole and stole it <laughs> Any other questions? Concerns, comments? If not, I'll take a motion. That's probably fair. Okay. I move to authorize the interim town administrator to enter into contracts with Greeley Lock and Key for access control and security camera projects. Second. Acting town clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Granquist? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is resolution 20-27 supporting the pool transfer. Town Attorney Matthew Gould. Uh, thank you, Mayor Austin. <clears throat> Uh, you may remember that a few weeks ago <clears throat> we discussed the constraints on the uh, town's ability to show its support for the pool transfer uh, that was approved back in August. Uh, we looked at the statutes and the statutes do allow a resolution of the board as long as it's distributed through uh, normal distribution mechanisms uh, to, be, to be approved, just demonstrating the board's support for the pool transfer. And that's what this resolution is about. It's just uh, encouraging support for a vote in favor of approving the transfer and happy to answer any questions okay questions from the town board no no in general any questions hearing none i'll take a motion I make a motion we approve 20 resolution number 20-27 20 27 in support of the resolution of the pool transfer to the Thompson River Parks and Recreation District. Second. <laughs> Acting Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Grandquist? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is an executive session uh, pursuant to Colorado Revised Statutes 24-6-402, Section 4B, uh, for the purpose of receiving legal advice from the town attorney on specific legal questions related to a proposed release agreement between the town and the town administrator, Tim Singwald. I'll take a motion. Yeah, Mayor, make a motion uh, that we go into executive session. Pursuant to section 246402 4B of the Colorado Advice Statute, it's for the purpose of receiving legal advice from the town attorney on specific legal questions related to a proposed release agreement between the town and the town administrator, Tim Singwald. I get a second? Second. Thank you. Acting town clerk, please call for a vote. Uh, Trustee Grandquest? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. And Mayor Austin? Yes. <laughs> Motion passed. <Okay. laughs> Sorry. We'll pause for five minutes to go into an executive session that will include uh, Trustee Granquist, Trustee Trailer, Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich, Trustee Wakeman. Trustee Rodriguez, Trustee Meisner, and uh, Town Attorney Matthew Gould. And yourself. And, and myself. Alright. Donna, are you ready? Uh, Cheryl, are you ready? Um, no, 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next item on the agenda is consideration for approval of release agreement between the town of Milliken and the town administrator, Tim Singwald. Matthew Gould, town attorney. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the board has before it a release agreement that's been negotiated between the uh, town attorney and the attorney for Mr. Singlewald. Um, this is consistent with the resolution made on the record uh, that a release would be uh, drafted reflecting uh, key terms that were negotiated between the attorneys. Um, and so it is, I'm, so I'm presenting that to you for your consideration. Any discussion on the matter? <coughs> Hearing none, I'll take a motion. I move to approve the release agreement between <coughs> the town of Milliken and the town administra administrator, Tim Singwell. Second it. Acting town clerk, please call for a vote. <coughs> Trustee Rodriguez? No. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Uh, Trustee Grandquist? No. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Meisner? No. Mayor Austin? No. Motion not passed. Okay, that concludes our action items. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is discussion for the uh, town administrator position. Okay. Before the board are three options that we may consider. Um, as a move forward process. And so we want to go ahead and review the process and discuss those. <clears throat> One option is to hire an agency to do the search. Uh, the pros of that is they can evaluate and screen the applicants. On the cons, that costs us money. Uh, probably a minimum of 10000 the last time we checked. Uh, it's a good three month time frame process. And then any new town administrator, there's a good six to 12 month learning curve at a minimum. Second option is to use CML. On the pro side, they are free. Um, on the con side, again, it's a three months time frame. They don't evaluate the applicants, they just send them to us. And again, it's a six to 12 month learning curve. Third option is to promote the current interim town administrator when the time comes. On the pro side, previous experience, immediate transition into the position, and town knowledge reducing the learning curve. On the con side, she will be over people that she currently works with and will need to manage them. And we would also have to backfill the town clerk. Our past discussions, we have talked about limiting the search to Colorado only. Uh, in the past, we've paid for relocation and then the individual doesn't work out well and that's just more money problems. So, 
hearing those items, I'm opening it up for the board to talk about what process they feel they want to use uh, when the time comes. I would say I would, I would honestly prefer the promoting the interim administrator uh, because of the both the pros and the cons, I think, um, even on the cons side, they're not great enough to dissuade me from doing that personally. Okay. Trustee Trailer? Can I ask if she wants to be? Yes. Can I ask that? Yes, uh, can I ask that? Do you want to be promoted? Would you? consider it? Would I? Yes. Um, I've served in, this, this is the second time I've served as interim. Um, and to be honest, every time we've hired a new administrator, um, I think I've now had seven, six new, maybe five new, under, well, um, I've had to work really close with them for the first year. Um, a lot of it's history. Um, introducing them to key members in our community. Um, so yes, um, I, I don't relish the fact of having to do that again. Um, only for fear because we haven't been very successful, um, unfortunately. Um, so my answer is yes. Uh, Trustee Wakeman. Cheryl, I have very high respect for the job that you have done um, for us, so um, thank you for your time and, and effort with that. Um, I don't, I don't feel like I'm ready to make a decision on this at this point, though I, I would like to think about it for a while. Trustee Rodriguez, your thoughts? I think Cheryl is a huge asset. Um, I think my only concern would be um, we have relationships with our colleagues um, and I just want to be able, I want to make sure that everybody within um, the town, not saying that she would or would not, is treated the same as far as disciplinary actions and um, promotions. Um, that would be my only concern. I think Cheryl is always going above and beyond um, and I'm impressed with her work ethic. Uh, Trustee Meester? I've been involved with hiring town administrators for more town administrators than I even want to think about. And it's always been a difficult thing to do. Um, almost every one of them that I can remember came in and for the first few years after they got their feet on the ground, everything was rosy and they did a great job and everything and then sooner or later they either weren't up to the job or weren't able to interact with the community in such a manner that they we actually had a positive relationship with the community, with the people outside the community and so on. Cheryl's been in the community for a long time and has made very significant friendships and relationships with many of the people in town and with the staff and with the board and past boards and so on. And uh, I guess I'm kind of of the opinion, better the devil you know than the one you don't. 
Come on, yeah, guys. sure. How would you feel about that one? Was that for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> that so amazing. Yeah. That's, kind, That's of kind of where I am. No, Cheryl. Cheryl, you're all up. <laughs> so, and my commentary is, uh, you know, I, I've done it in my own profession where I've stepped out and had to manage people that I previously worked with. Um, it can be difficult and, and challenging. So, um, if Cheryl is promoted, I will be looking for fairness across the board uh, for all employees, both in promotion and dis disciplinary issues. Um, because when one employee is allowed to do something that the rest aren't, that's where animosity starts to brew. Mm -hmm. So, that will be a, a high priority. In addition, uh, I believe there needs to be, at a minimum, the board needs to step up and do its due diligence and do uh, at least every three months uh, soundbite check with the town administrator and make sure we are on track so we don't have any issues occur. Furthermore, I believe that Cheryl knows the rules. Um, she knows the policies regarding what should and should not come before the board and that things need to be discussed with the board before striking out and making deals um, so that we make sure that we are on the right track. Um, being town clerk, she has that, that knowledge that she brings uh, to the job. In addition to the numerous grants that she's gone up after and has she knows the value of those grants to this town. And this past year, how many grants have we gone after? One. That's it. Just one. Um, and I'm thankful for that one grant. Uh, but this town does run on grants. It, it, it's, it's a priority. So I would have to say that um, I'm not going to say the devil you know better than the devil you don't. Thank you so much. I think we, we know the qualities that we have here, and I'm going to say that I don't think this town can suffer through uh, another poor town administrator. We just can't. We've been through several. Any other discussion? No, I will... Uh say that uh, 21 years of experience speaks loudly in my my book yeah. and uh, I think uh, at this point in time Cheryl's our best option by far I think I've sat in, in a lot of interviews uh, myself and I think uh, if you put Cheryl's credentials next to any resume that comes in hers is going to outshine any of them that's that we're going to get here. So. Well, I think there's another advantage, and that is that Cheryl knows all of the levels up to the town administrator because she's served most of those levels. <laughs> so she knows what's required, she knows what to expect, whereas somebody coming from outside, not only would they have a large learning curve, but many of them would not have any idea exactly what the positions involve. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I think we can direct the town attorney to work on an agreement. Um, and I think in the discussion, we can make that direction. We don't have to do a resolution, right? We can direct you to work on an agreement? Sure. Okay. How do we end up deciding salary? Does that, is that something that needs to be put into the agreement? Yes. Okay, because I have I have the presiding pay scale. 
Just a moment and I'll learn how to read it. It is the first line here. Please read it. Pass it down to you. <laughs> I need some glasses. <clears throat> The first line there. Right here? Yes. Read it out loud? No, just read it to yourself. Oh, okay. Pass it down. <laughs> right there. This one. That one. Hang on. Which right. number Which are you talking about? Okay. I'm just gonna read it out loud. <laughs> the minimum can you I don't I don't think can we I don't no, think we I can do that. You can like read her salary? You can read the salaries. This is public knowledge, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it's public yeah. knowledge. Yeah. Yes, there are websites that publish that information after they get it through Cora. Yeah. Okay. The minimum is 142,008. The market guide is 1785 and the maximum is 214200. We can leave a blank space if you'd like for now. Yeah. Yep, I got you. Okay, we'll leave a blank space for that and fill it in at the time of the resolution. I think uh, something we sit down and then and discuss with us and sure. Okay, we can do that. Um, what I think is fair. To right. Come up with a solution. Do you want him to leave the start date blank? Can we figure that? Or go ahead and fill it in. Well, I think after 21 years, she probably give us at least a month of volunteer time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't care. <laughs> Anybody else on an opinion on a start date? I'll leave the start date Second. blank too, and we'll oh, fill that in. Oh, immediately. A lot of blanks in that one. <laughs> Do the best you can, Matt. Okay. Okay. Any other business before the board? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're out. Aye. We're out. <laughs> Can you